Hey everyone, welcome to Logan's Mosh Pig. Glad to have you here. I'm here with my special guest, Hedwig. Today we're going to do another episode of the Breaking Down Song series, the place where we take a closer look at some of my favorite songs from all kinds of different bands, and analyze the lyrics, because when we do that we gain a deeper appreciation for the music we listen to. If there's a specific band you guys want me to talk about in a future episode of this series, please leave a comment down below. I'll check your feedback. Today we're going to discuss my favorite song by The Deftones. Something that has always fascinated me about Deftones is how they can change from sappy to assertive in a flash, like it was nothing. They keep listeners on their toes. Ranking their albums feels like asking a person to rank their favorite junk foods. You mull over the order, you move it around some, weigh your options for a while, then change the order again, swap everything around. Basically, you settle on whatever seems right at the moment. You can't pick a correct order but the order is subject to change at a moment's notice. Today, this is what I came up with for my favorite song extracted from my top five Deftones albums ranked from fifth to first. Starting off with number five, I picked Koino Yokan. I crowned the desolate track Intoned as my favorite. Next up at number four from the self-titled album, Deftones. I whittled it down to a barreling song called Bloody Cape. At number three, next up, from Diamond Eyes, that album, I chose the Unbreakable title track. At number two, from Around the Fur, off that album, I went with the killer tune, MX. Finally, at the top spot, number one, off White Pony, a true cut above the rest. I'm talking about Knife Party with guests like Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, Ghostface. <laughs> All of them are there. It was excruciating trying to pick my favorite song. There wasn't a clear winner. I totally had to rely on process of elimination to figure it out. This time I'm going to go with Knife Party or Knife Party. Tomato Tomato. Technically it's called Knife Party P-R-T-Y. That's the official title that was on the album. They killed the letter A! That's what this song must be about. Case closed. That's it. I'll do my outro. No, I'm just kidding. Similar to albums, my favorite song also flip-flops, moves around depending on my mood. Honestly, I wouldn't mind calling any of these five tracks that I just mentioned my favorite. The gap is so small between all of them. Like I said, today the award goes to Knife Party. Before we get into the lyrics of Knife Party, going through section by section, attempting to decipher what the lyrics mean, let's get into some background off the White Pony album which Knife Party originated. So White Pony was released in 2000, 20 years ago. It was Deftones' third studio album. Chino Marino started doing double duty because he was juggling lead vocals and then he also added rhythm guitar to his repertoire. He actually did pretty good. Not bad for his first attempt. Not bad at all. This album featured the single Change in The House of Flies and on the special reissued album in a different color Back to School, Mini Maggot, that's M-A-G-G-I-T, not Maggot, 
maggot. This many misspellings could rival the Hundred Acre Woods. White Pony reached platinum status here in America, and the general consensus among Deftones fans seems to be that White Pony represents the finest work done by the Deftones. Well, I agree, I wouldn't call it a blowout victory necessarily. It's nearly a toss up for me between the first, second, and maybe the third album that I had in my list, the third, second, and first spot. So, I'm going to throw out my usual disclaimer. This is just my interpretation of what the lyrics mean. It's my opinion. My opinion might be different from yours, and that's fine. We all hear these songs differently. There's no right or wrong answer. This song can mean many different things. It doesn't have to be my version, so don't take this interpretation too seriously. It's just what I think. I might be wrong, and I'm fine with that. Let's just respect each other's opinions. I'll also put a link in the description down below to Knife Party if you're interested. So we're going to go through section by section, see what we can find out here. Starting off with verse 1. Let's see, it says, My knife, it's sharp and chrome, come see inside my bones. All of the fiends are on the block. I'm the new king, I'll take the queen, cause in here we're all anemic, in here anemic and sweet, so. In the first verse, this part sounds to me like a stalker situation, a dude completely obsessed with this girl, she's all he thinks about, definitely not the shy type, completely obsessed with her, he will go after her and basically claim her as his own make her belong to him. He's probably been planning this for a while in his head and now he senses the perfect opportunity to more or less put his plan into motion, get the ball rolling. Then we move on to the chorus which goes, go get your knife, go get your knife and come in, go get your knife, go get your knife and lay down, go get your knife, go get your knife, now kiss me. With the chorus, we realize that time skips ahead a bit. He most likely confronts her, most likely holds the knife against her throat, presses the knife into her throat, digs the knife into her flesh, and then leads her into a room away from everyone else where they can be alone. Then he orders her to lay down on the bed and make love to him do all these naughty things with him. She's not really in a position to fight back. We don't hear from her. This song completely stays on his perspective and never deviates, never shows what is going through her mind. It just stays completely focused on him. Then we get to verse 2, which says, I can float here forever in this room. We can't touch the floor. In here, we're all anemic. In here, anemic and sweet, so... In verse 2, the sensations this guy receives, because of her, the pleasure coursing through his body during their encounter becomes so intense that reality pretty much slips away from his mind. Kind of describing things in a hazy, dreamy sort of way like he's there but not fully aware of what's going on, what's happening around him. He pretty much abandons all other thoughts, gets lost in the moment. He doesn't think about anything except the intimate moments with this helpless girl that he took captive. Then we move on to the chorus once again, which I won't read again for obvious reasons. Then the bridge. The bridge goes, I could float here forever, you were ever sweet, I could float here forever, anemic and sweet, so, well the bridge basically reiterates the chorus, says almost the exact same thing word for word, 
just lets us know how much he enjoys what's happening. Then we hear the chorus one more time before the curtain closes on Night Party. The song comes to an end. So now that we've dissected the lyrics, attempted to discover what they mean, let's talk about the mood a little bit. When you listen to Knife Party, how do you feel? Well, I would say unnerving once you realize what the purpose this sadistic man had toward her, this woman. It will probably make you feel rather disgusted, at least it did for me. Your results may vary. What about the most memorable line from the song? Which line stood out the most on this track? I picked, I could float here forever. I think this line serves as the climax of the entire song. This proves in his mind whatever audacious actions he committed to reach this point were completely justified in his mind. He doesn't feel bad about it. This guy has absolutely no problem with it, with what he did. Only the goal mattered. Only the goal was important, not how he got there. To him, the splendor of reward far outweighed his morals that could have been telling him you shouldn't go through with this. He was only worried about the goal and nothing else. What about some themes? Well, some themes that I pulled out of here were fear is a better alternative compared to love. When you threaten to harm an individual or perhaps someone they care about, that leaves them in an extremely vulnerable type of position. You remove their power. You take all the power away from them. They feel absolutely horrible about what they're being forced to do by the person in control, the person in charge. But the guilt associated with the consequences of disobeying would be even more catastrophic for them. Nevertheless, if the man in the song, if he actually genuinely tried to get this woman he was after to fall in love with him, over time he probably would have achieved the same result, albeit with a willing participant this time. Possibly glorifying drug use was another theme that I noticed from the song Night Party, especially in the second verse in the bridge that got me thinking a little more. Maybe the song isn't what I initially thought it was. Perhaps it represents something else. I'm not completely sure. The descriptions he gave there in the second verse in the bridge to me appear awfully similar to an LSD trip or maybe a high linked with a different substance. It doesn't explicitly say. Perhaps that was the hidden message contained within the lyrics. I imagine it could go either way. It could be about taking this girl hostage and having his way with her or drug use. Could go either way, honestly. Both of them make sense. There isn't necessarily one size fits all answer here. It's in the eye of the beholder, up to the listener. What about the strengths and weaknesses of Knife Party? Without question, the sneaky riffage throughout the song accentuated the whole tone of the song Knife Party. It wouldn't have been the same without it, no way. The riffage flawlessly matches the personality of the main character. The stark contrast between the verse and the chorus was another theme that I immediately wrote down. Classic deftone move there. I think on a deeper level that contrast between the verses and the chorus highlights how this man might have poured on the charm at first with this woman and when that backfired the sadistic man like a like switch his personality changed he became something else no more Mr. Nice Guy he decided to use force instead 
we're going to do things the hard way, not the easy way. The final strength was the heart-wrenching screaming initiated following the second chorus of the song. That part evokes emotions more thoroughly than words could ever. At that point, you briefly forget this is just a song. After you hear that screaming, it just seems like you're actually there as a witness. What about the weaknesses? Well, the subject matter sort of rubs you the wrong way. This might be petty. You know, kind of like how you feel bad when you laugh at a cruel joke. Well, after I listened to Knife Party, I felt a little ashamed, slightly bad for liking the song, taking into consideration what the song was potentially about. The only other weakness was, once again, the screams. The screams were a weakness too. Sort of petty, but I think the screams lasted too long. A solid minute. Like, okay, that's enough, you can stop now. Realistic, absolutely, the screaming was, yet a bit annoying as well. My ears were close to bleeding from the screaming. It kept going on and on and on. If they sliced the amount of time spent screaming in half, it would have been bearable. Finally, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would I rate this as far as replayability is concerned? Well, I don't do this very often, but I decided to give Deftones Night Party 9.5 out of 10. I usually round to a whole number. I debated between a 9 and a 10 forever, kept going back and forth. In the end, I decided to tack on half a point. What the heck? Like I said earlier, there's no glaring issues, major problems with the song apart from the subject matter. That was the only low point of the song, but it won't affect everyone the same way. Some listeners might get disturbed by the content of the song like I was, or others might just brush it off, completely ignore it. Moral issues aside, I immensely admired Night Party. Deftones really brought their A-game with this one. Well, that's all I got, guys. Please tell me what your favorite Deftones song is down in the comments below. That does it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate the support. I'll see you next time. Till then, rock on.